National Friday Halapa, and a big thank you to, again, the community for making time for such an important presentation and our uh, Sharon Expansion Committee, uh, led by our uh, beloved President Brother Zia, uh, for joining us today and giving us this informative presentation. We've been uh, fundraising for the last several years, alhamdulillah, for our ex much, much needed expansion at the at ICNI Sharon. Alhamdulillah, things are progressing uh, under the leadership of Brother Zia and the Expansion Committee. So we're going to be presenting that. The committee will be presenting all of this, inshallah, to the community with the various options. Please come with your questions, inshallah, you can message them. And then uh, the expansion committee will be able to field all questions, inshallah. So now I will turn it over to Brother Zia. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, uh, dear community members. Welcome to our uh, Friday Halakha. And today we'll be talking about the ICNE Sharon Expansion Project. And this is uh, in continuation to uh, our um, fundraiser when we promised that we showed you a glimpse of the Sharon Master Plan. So we will go into detail a little bit today uh, what we are doing and what we have done so far uh, because uh, a lot of you have been donating for this project for a long time. And uh, most of you have been involved uh, one way or the other. I know that uh, this is a huge project and we need uh, help, support, and input from every community member to move forward. So we will, inshallah, uh, go through um, uh, the expansion uh, project. Uh, now, uh, the thing is that uh, initially we started uh, with uh, two architects, you know, two, two architects came forward and they, we started working with them. One was Brother Khalid from Chicago, the, uh, the person who did the Masjid uh, Dar es Salaam over there. And then we had a local architect here in uh, Sharon, uh, Scott. He had done the, I don't know if most of you are aware, the Aya Khan Hospital in Karachi, Pakistan. So we chose uh, Scott because it would have been easier for us to deal uh, locally. And Scott has a partner who is also a community member, Saim. So we are working um, with them. And uh, Alhamdulillah, it's, uh, it's, uh, we are moving forward with that. And uh, as you're already aware, uh, uh, pre-COVID, our center last year, if you remember, even up till February, uh, when we had the Halakha program, the masjid was full of community and we didn't have space to do our program. We were actually handicapped uh, with the number of programs that we had. We were not able to accommodate in our building. And it's uh, given us an opportunity right now because of COVID, a lot of things are going, um, uh, tough for everyone, but it gave us an opportunity to uh, uh, come up with a Sharon master plan because this was the perfect time. We already ha had hired an architect for uh, our expansion project, but it, uh, the, it, we got the opportunity to actually do the uh, um, master plan with them. So we'll share with you, nothing is finalized. We'll show you all the options, the need of the community and we will come back to uh, uh, to you at the end for question and answer, and we will like to hear from you. And this is one of the uh, meeting that we were, we are having today. There'll be a lot more to come and we will be uh, getting input from all of you to move forward, inshallah. So I will now pass it over to uh, brother uh, Fawad. He will discuss with you the need of the community, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you are able to hear me. I wish you well. And I pray that in this situation, may Allah bless you and protect you from any calamity and uh, keep you protected. So for such any in any such project, right? I mean, anything which is as huge as when we talk about expansion or a new building or something, defining and understanding why we are trying to do that is the most important action section for us, right? It's not how we're gonna do it, what are we gonna do it? The first thing is that, why do we want to do it? And as Brother Zia, our president, you know, uh, mentioned that we, over the past several years, we, you know, mashallah, so many of you uh, noticed, so many of you came to uh, various board members, community members, more community, community members, and they, they showed their reasons and they gave their feedback that what kind of, you know, uh, I mean, what they like about this masjid, mashallah, why they come to this masjid, and then what, what could be done to improve it as well. 
So that's the why section, right? So the need of the community, if you know, if we look at it very high level, right? Mashallah, we asked also not, not only that, we we, we actively asked uh, people for their feedback, and people, Mashallah, gave their feedback as well. So, in 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 short, essentially, the key things that was that one thing that Sharon faced was that there was the prayer hall. I mean, Mashallah. Beautiful landscape, beautiful building, uh, looks big as well. But the biggest thing was for most of them and most of us that we faced is that the, the prayer and social hall was just one, right? Mashallah, we used we uh, use the same hall for prayers. We use the same hall when we uh, needed to eat as part of halakha, as part, part of Ramadan or any other function. And the same hall was used for various other activities and functions as well. So one of the main driver that was behind it was that people just wanted to have a separate, perhaps more relaxed area for food from the prayer area, right? That was one aspect that uh, came, uh, that was brought. The other one was that when we want to do smaller gatherings, like a meeting, you know, like a close group, basically, like, you know, I mean, a focus group won't, like, mashallah, sisters want to do something, our youth want to do something. They, that was one thing that was also lacking is that there were not enough meeting rooms, right? Or they were not enough separate utility rooms for various functions, for sisters, for youth, for for kids, for, for so many other things. We had just one, mashallah, large room that we were all using, right? And then the other, other key thing was that even though it looked like a room, but so many times per year, actually, I mean, more than many times, just imagine, Right, a couple of years back, we our how our Friday prayers were. Right, we used to go to entire capacity of that. We had to think about little out of the box, and then we had to start two Friday prayers. Not an easy discussion, or or a de, de, sorry, not an easy decision, but we had to take it. Why? Because the room was not enough, the parking was not enough, logistics was not enough. Our roads used to get congested and gridlocked a lot of times, and then the room was not enough. Right. Same thing was uh, noticed over Eid as well, right? So these were the very key issues that everyone noticed, mashallah, either, you know, the community member or a visitor or people who are working in the volunteer communities and they notice that. Another key thing, if you look at number seven, is the uphill structure, right? When they were, especially on, you know, live in New England, especially Massachusetts, how many times it snow, it rains, it's cold, right? And in mashallah, so many Fridays, so many Ramadan and all these, we had very little parking, one thing, but then people, if we'd go and find park in some place, good, Alhamdulillah, but they had to do an uphill walk. Right. Uh, and and it, that was a difficult thing. We noticed that so many of our elders, you know, they came to us, they said, you know what? I love coming to this masjid, but my sometimes my knees just tells me that it, it is just too difficult sometimes, right? So this is this this one other this was another key area. While there was not enough space inside, there were logistical issues outside as well because people had to climb uphill structures. If you look at number eight, safety and security in all aspects. Again, you know, I mean, safety and sanctity of human life and our congregants and our community is extremely important. There were cases that, you know, people sometimes just slipped. Why? Because they had to walk a very long time, long, long, long path, basically, right? So what in, 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 in short, you know, just looking at all these points, the, the demand was we need more room, we need better functioning areas and we need parking as well it's not that you know we just we if we, that there's an area shortage but there is there is an area shortage for functions perspective as well we need a small focus rooms as well like babysitting like craft room like a library like a meeting room where we can actually have an external delegate coming to us we can meet with them properly with dedicated meeting rooms right and also something that would envision and give us the hope for the next not few years, but several decades. Imagine this, when this masjid, this structure was established several decades ago, the community was perhaps a few dozen, maybe a dozen families. I, I do not know exactly, but imagine a dozen families, maybe 50, 60, 80 people. How much that has grown? That during Eid, 
we see four or five thousand people, mashallah, visiting our place. What does this tell you that the vision from several decades back, mashallah, was, you know, we have surpassed that. Now we need a different structure that would accommodate everything. Another key thing for us was attracting our youth to our center. And but and we all know, right? I mean, youth come to places like these centers when they have something that they can latch on to it as well. It's not just religious nourishment, but also where they can feel comfortable. They can play some basketball, perhaps some soccer, perhaps, you know, some football and other activities. And another key thing that we have, when I mentioning youth, it's not just, you know, like boys going outside to play. We wanted to think about like what, mashallah, our little girls would like to do. You know, do they, do they, do they have facilities where they can go and play securely and in full safety as well? Like where they would not be objected to anything, right? So it's not just about youth in general imagining it's for boys. No, but it's for sisters as well in area which is secluded for them. So overall, looking and hearing from the entire community, taking their feedback, general conversations, you know, keeping them, funneling them into one area. This is what the why was that why a master plan of the entire property was needed. That is just to address all these, mashallah, you know, issues, which are good issues, by the way. These are not, when, when I use the word issue, it's not, it's not something bad. It's an opportunity really. So most importantly, your feedback has helped us develop a master plan that will actually encompass us, help us for several decades to come, inshallah. Okay. Uh, at this time, I want to also mention that uh, Brother Fawad is the Vice President of ICNE, and he is also uh, uh, one of the uh, core group members of the Expansion Committee. And uh, uh, I, I, I hope he wouldn't mind that I also would like to say that he's one of the biggest financial donors for this project also, inshallah, up to now. So thank you, Brother Fawad, for, your, present, uh, for uh, your kind words. Let's move on to the next slide, inshallah. So um, uh, can everybody hear me, Brother Fawad? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. so now um, I, I'm sharing the our uh, property uh, uh, map and overview. Alhamdulillah, we have been blessed with uh, a very good uh, land. It's a huge land. All of it is uh, not buildable, but uh, a, a major portion of it is buildable. And what <laughs> we what we we got this opportunity since uh, the COVID um, uh, struck us. And we got this time and we took the opportunity to get the whole property um, studied by Outback Engineering. Outback Engineering is the company which is a civil, civil engineering company who originally worked on this on, on our property when we built it, when we expanded it for the schools. So they know every inch of our land. So we hired them to do a perk testing and a soil testing of our property. This is our whole property and the, uh, the small uh, black and white square that you see is where the perk testing and soil testing was done. You can see it is uh, done behind the GE building. And we enter the property on the left-hand side. So soil testing and perk testing of the whole property was done by Outback Engineering. And the result came out very good that uh, this, is, uh, this is a good property. There's a lot of flat land which can be constructed. We have a lot of land, uh, ledge land, which cannot be built, but it can be used for very other purposes for building small um, areas where people can picnic and stuff. So, so this is an overview of the property and you see the perk testing and soil testing areas. Let me move to the next, next slide. So now this is uh, during the perk testing and soil testing, the Outback Engineering last, time, last year. In July, 2019, they were here. And the results were pretty good. They were, the soil is very good for construction and the water is about 10 feet deep. I mean, and this is, as you can see with the pictures that this is right after a rainfall, you know, and we, we measured it about eight to 10 feet, uh, the water was below the surface. So it's a pretty good land for, um, for any kind of a construction. If you remember the last, um, th this year we, uh, and last year also we did the 
open Eid prayers in this area, uh, also this year. And uh, we were able to uh, have town in here do their movie nights uh, just to have a good relationship with the town of Sharon. We allowed that to happen here. And this is the same land. So after this, let me go to the next slide. Now I'm going to run through the multiple options that we have and that we have been working on. And let me, uh, 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 let me tell everyone that none of this option is off the table. These are all valid options as of today, and none of them is, uh, is, has been scrapped out. Depending on what the community wants and how they want it, we will, uh, we will move forward uh, with one of these options. The first option, the option A, is uh, built by our own architects, the community ar architect, whether Junaid Abbasi, he is the one who designed all this, and he, and um, this is still a very feasible option, depending on uh, how much uh, money we can raise and what the community wants. It, at the end of the day, this will be the general body which is going to decide what to do. So this is the option A, which is expanding the existing hall towards the leaching field, towards the slope, which will give us about 8,000 square feet of uh, uh, a living space. Uh, and existing, we already had about 7,000. That will be about 15,000 square feet total uh, area. Let me go to the option B. This is the option that if you remember, the bald head builders were working with us in the last few years. This is also a good option uh, where we can expand the hall but um, uh, and we uh, the the expansion um, is going to be expensive. This one the, the reason is that uh, this building will be all construed of heavy metal structure, steel structure, because of the the uh, road passing underneath it. But it's, it's still nothing that we can um, scrap. But this is a very expensive option. That's the only thing about this option. But still, it is a technically feasible option. Then we, uh, as I told you, we got this opportunity. And um, after working with the Outback Engineering, we found out this option number C, which is a new masjid on the flat land where we had the uh, Eid prayers, we, where we have extended parking for Eid. So if we do an expansion on this side, uh, on this area, it will be good for our future uh, uh, tens of years, I mean, 10, 20 years, decades or forever, because the masjid can be built there. And uh, the, I mean, you can do all the future expansion behind the masjid. We asked the architect especially that if you chose to, uh, when you are doing the design work, the masjid should be front, the first building in the front and everything will be uh, uh, following behind the main building. So this is the option C, which our architects uh, suggested. But of course, it's a brand new building. It will be more expensive. And it will need a more, lot of uh, area around it. But the good thing is that it can go a long way for the center, for the community. But this is all, again, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, this is also a very good option. Let me go to the next slide. This is another view of the option C. This is the uh, showing our whole property. And uh, also showing the housing that we can build in our property. At least we can have one, two, three, four, five, seven to eight single family home, or we can also do uh, multi fam uh, the townhouses. But uh, the only thing to remember here is that anything that we do with the masjid and schools, we, we, we get approval very easily because the town has uh, special provisions for nonprofit and religious organization. But as, as, as soon as we talk about expanding our a residential area or rental area, then it is falls into different categories and uh, requires different laws and zoning requirements. But still, this is the our whole property, which can, um, uh, which uh, this is a master plan. If you want to use it today, it is it is all civil engineering. Uh, civil engineering design has approved this. The town has seen this, and town. Uh, did not raise any red flags for this uh, whole property because it is all designed by architects, civil engineers, and traffic engineers were involved. If you can see multiple uh, loop roads in there, this was, uh, we had to hire a traffic engineer, actually our architects suggested, 
because uh, without that, we wouldn't have been able to present it to the town because the town says the single street going in, what if there's an emergency, how will the fire truck or ambulance will get in? So when they saw their loop roads, although we had to spend a little bit of money for the uh, traffic engineering, but they said now it can be, it can be uh, workable now it's because the, you don't see, they don't uh, affect the chase, uh, chase drive will be uh, bottlenecked because of traffic, because the loop roads can assist in that part of it. So that, this is um, um, the view of our whole property with the master plan, inshallah. So I'll quickly go through uh, some uh, pricing option, the option A, expanding the masjid towards the uh, leaching field. And now this is from an architect, which is, uh, they, they have high overheads and whatever, but if you have a builder from the community, it, the numbers can drop down drastically. But just for reference, this is by an, uh, a civil engineering, uh, the, uh, the outback engineering and architect were involved together with this pricing. So option A is about $3.6 million. Option B, which is the uh, expansion towards the basketball court is the most expensive because of the steel construction. And option C, which is uh, uh, the expansion of a new building, uh, on the flatland is going to be 5.7 million. And again, if we if we find a better uh, uh, builder or local, uh, I mean, from the community, these prices can go down uh, significantly. Let me show a small video that our uh, architects made. Uh, we can, I, I'll like to share that with you now, and then I'll come back to this, inshallah. Give me one second. I can upload the video quickly. Yeah. Or if you want, I can. Okay. Oh, you can. Yeah, I can try. Okay, so you can. Please go ahead. If you are, okay. you, you can go, go ahead. Let me see the sound. <laughs> Nothing can compare to you. Oh, Allah, you are the greatest. Nothing can compare to you. Oh, Allah, you are the greatest. Nothing can compare to you. Giving, loving, merciful Lord, all praise is due. Go back to the uh, um, okay. So the pricing information is done. You see the video. Now uh, I would turn um, um, uh, turn it over to Brother Zaki. He is our director of facilities, and Mashallah, very he, he and his team is doing a tremendous work with ICN during this COVID times. During the you must have seen the way they handle the. Um, Eid, the Ramadan, and with the COVID and everything, the, the whole team is, uh, mashallah, uh, 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 an asset for our community. They are doing an excellent job to keep the masjid open in, even in this tough time. And at the same time, I would request all of you to support them when you go for Jumma, whenever you go there, to, uh, to help them run this center uh, uh, properly, mashallah. Jazakallah khair, 
جزاكم الله خير برادر زيا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي um, جزاكم الله خير برادر زيا for keeping this vision alive and uh, I think one of the most critical things that uh, we wanted to make sure uh, that our community realizes is that um, the due diligence that is actually happening in the background, uh, there is a lot of work that actually takes place. Um, and I think what's most critical is that there are no, there are no decisions that's being made yet. Uh, these are all options. These are the, the, the critical things that we would like to, the data that's been collected to, that to be shared with the community. Uh, and inshallah, uh, during the general body, that's when the decisions will be made and that's what we'll be driving toward, inshallah. May Allah accept your, uh, your, your, your donations and even your intent to, to support this, this uh, project. The other, th the other thing is that um, uh, work like this, you guys know, this requires tremendous amount of commitment and tremendous amount of uh, heavy lifting and attention to detail and to make sure that uh, we're delivering exactly what the community is, is requiring of us. So one of the things that um, when we had our meeting with our um, advisors uh, about a, a few weeks ago, they, they, wanted, they wanted us to clarify how are the decision making is taking place. So for example, this is just a, a simple resemblance of the governance structure. The building and planning committee was led by Brother Zia, uh, our president, um, for the longest, right? So that's the entity right there in the middle that actually drives the uh, most of the, the the work that's actually taking place, uh, the communication uh, around the the uh, the, assess the needs assessments, the budget, the whole thing. The building and planning committee takes care of that. This building and planning committee communicates with the board of directors, with the ICNE board, right? Uh, they communicate through uh, to the board about we're doing a uh, fundraiser. We need requests for community response. We need the you know general body meeting. Uh, we need more budget and so on and so forth. Fundraising, uh, and then also this this committee reports to the board of directors uh, during the uh, you know about the monthly updates and so on and so forth. Um, so this is the design that that uh, for the governance. Now this building and planning committee under it there is the core team, the expansion project core team. Those are the technical folks. For example, uh, me being part of facilities, I probably I'm there in that uh, a project core team, right? That's the project oversight. This is the technical side of things. It's probably, uh, you know, uh, uh, could be day-to-day -day, uh, decisions, uh, talking with the, with the town and so on and so forth. But at the same time on both sides, this expansion project core team, which is part of the building and planning committee also activates and engages with the architects, the builder the firm. They meet with them, the outback engineering team, uh, the assessment with the contractors and so on and so forth. On the left side, we take a lot of advisory, a lot of counsel from the, uh, our, our advisory council. Most of those folks are the folks that um, in the past were part of the, the board of directors. They understand the internal workings of how things happen and uh, they advise us as we go through. They question everything, uh, basically all the, uh, the, they wanna make sure that the due diligence is taking place. Um, so if you go to the next slide, <clears throat> what we have done then is um, one, of their one of the requests from the advisory council is they wanted a clarity around the decision-making, right? Who does what, who owns what, right? Um, so this is something that's uh, pretty much you guys, a lot of you guys are in, part of corporate America. Um, this is what you call a racist structure. And what the racist structure stands for is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed, right? So it pretty much clarifies who's, uh, has the, who, where does the buck stops, right? And that's the accountability. So you can see it, if you look right there, the board of directors for all the critical actions that has to take place from overall project approval, budget, project vision, um, you know, uh, uh, project oversight, uh, talking about uh, managing project execution, uh, the funding, the financial side of things, uh, you know, mobilizing the community for the project, all of those things. The accountability rests with the board of directors. But remember, they don't do, the, the accountability is there, but the responsibility of executing the work then is where things were defined by their R's. 
So the A is, stands for the accountability. The R stands, that defines who's responsible, who's gonna do that work. Uh, you know, and then of course, there is just the consult, right? Um, you consult with a few folks, uh, with a few, uh, for example, <clears throat> functions about certain things. And of course, you will inform um, some of these functions as well. So, so as to clarify how things go. This is very critical so as to make sure that uh, we're efficient in how we, how we operate and how we deliver on this project. And you can see this discussion took, uh, 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 you know, probably about a couple of months now ago or a month and a half. If you go to the next slide, um, this just shows the, at the high level uh, and inshallah, yeah, I mean, we have uh, probably missed a few from the advisory council. Uh, probably uh, Dr. Sha'ar, for example, could be part of the advi advisory council. So Brother Muhyiddin, for example, Dr. Mazin, Dr. Rashid Noor, uh, Brother Rajab. These are just a few names of our, the leaders in our community uh, that are uh, serve as advisory council for us. And they, they give us guidance on things. Now, like I said, it's not inclusive. I missed a few folks there, I'm sure. Uh, but from a core design perspective, uh, you know, we have a brother Zia, of course, uh, you know, he led this project. He knows all the background of this, uh, 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 Khalid Bai, uh, Imran, uh, 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 Sister Iman Lashin has been a great help for this project. She has the technical side of things. Uh, brother Amr Muslahi, uh, Fuad, and, uh, you know, brother Tawqir, Izzadeen, and uh, brother Osama, right? So this is the, this is kind of like the working, the working team, but inshallah, we will, uh, in terms of the advisory council, we will uh, definitely vet that some more and reach out to some of the folks who can actually be uh, of advising uh, to this team, inshallah. Barakallah feek, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, brother Zaki, very well explained, mashallah. And uh, let me go to the... So now uh, we have seen uh, all the three options and uh, uh, we will be working on it more as soon as the uh, COVID uh, gives us the opportunity. We will be meeting in person in the, in the masjid and we will be presenting this again to the whole community. And then uh, the decision will come from the general body uh, presentation and that the, the community is going to decide which is the best possible project for them and which is, uh, which will, uh, it should also be worthwhile if you're spending $3 million or $5 million, it should be worthwhile that it should last the community for a long time, not for five years. But it all, it all depending on how much we can raise, how much we can come up with, but uh, all coming from the community and the general body, that decision will be made from that. Just to let you know and just to ensure you that uh, um, this, this decision is not going to be made by a group of people. It will be made by the general body, inshallah. So uh, let me go to the next. Uh, so now um, I'll again request Brother Fawad and, uh, to pull in this one. If we go for option C, what will be use of the current building for uh, plan C? Assalamualaikum. I hope you guys are able to hear me as well. So <clears throat> one of the, you see, so the, the key things that we discussed as part of the need of the community of why we are doing it, it had certain, certain very key elements that you know were important you know right having more space better parking safe place a youth activity center and all that right so every option and when they were devised and when they were you know i mean and analyzed so we had to see that which option satisfies what the needs of the community are essentially right because this is a huge investment as brother zaki mentioned brother zia mentioned as well and the investment of such really has to you know satisfy uh, the needs right i mean if if it's not then why do it so uh, you know, it's not just we need more space, we need better services. We need improvement in services, less congestion, you know, safe places, safe, uh, just just overall improvement in a lot of areas. So obviously, you know, I mean, uh, uh, every option was devised, but when the plan C came, right? The, so the, the difference between the plan option A, B, N, and C was that option A and B were expanding on the current structure, right? Versus, Option C was, you know, it's considered a totally new and separate structure away on a flat ground, uh, much more, you know, safe uh, from a lot of perspective. 
but mashallah we have this beautiful structure that exists and stand and it has actually i mean you know we 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 have so much care and love for that structure as well we i mean we had to think like okay what could be used or what could what this structure itself could be utilized for we're not just going to let it go like that right so they were again going back to the drawing board going back to asking questions you know hearing feedback from core community members and uh, also a few people i mean so what the some high level ideas that came that inshallah if we go for option c the current structure which is a sound structure has a lot of purpose and we love so much could be utilized for could be still be so much useful for us one of the option is for example out of uh, option c i mean that we could utilize it for is the use the current building as a social hall and event space a dedicated events event space you know which uh, it is essentially designed for if you see it has the kitchen it has open seating space it has much on a nice uh, entry area nice passage area it has a veranda outside a balcony outside overlooking beautiful property it could be used for just for that or that space could be converted into a full youth activity center we can have a half basketball court there we can have an inside squash court there we can play badminton there we can do so many things like that which brings not just youth by the way they a little youth plus 20 and 30 years as well together right uh, because so many of us uh, like to you know just gather and just sometimes just play such things like squash or badminton comes to our mind or uh, uh, so many other activities right if so another actually good option that came to mind is that that perhaps we can establish functioning a school there right because the school building downstairs uh the 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 lower grades building i uh, i'm missing the name it's called g building or the other building pardon me dr fatah abushar i should know it's just a slip of mind right now so but perhaps you know that building could our current structure could be used as a replacement for that building or even just establishing if that doesn't work out establishing our weekend schools properly mashallah because even our weekend schools are have grown so much that we had to borrow more space from not only masjid but also the lower grade uh, building as well last year right because our capacity for both saturday and sunday school went so much we had to borrow several rooms brother maz and can attest to that so guess what we can establish more schools perhaps right or in the end right we can use this space as dedicated meeting rooms and conference spaces as well so there are so many ideas mashallah all good really uh in uh, so that we can continue to utilize the current building in case we go with option c zakala khair okay brother with that inshallah i will uh, hand it over to brother taqir brother taqir is our uh, um, uh, controller and also he is the person who arranges all the all the events i mean all the intra interfaith activities all the online programs and uh, he does a uh, excellent fundraiser even in the covid times uh, alhamdulillah with uh, his work and the community support we were still able to uh, generate decent fund to run the run the center so brother takir uh, you can uh, take over on the qa session inshallah jazakallah khair brothers yeah uh, yeah it's really a team effort uh, everyone especially to the interfaith committee and the programs team under sheikh abdurrahman's guidance uh, I'll award them for facilitating everything during the the COVID uh, quarantine. Um, so, just for question and answer, Imran, I can't actually see them. I think they might be going to you. The they might they're going to the host only for the questions. No, there are no like... questions. Anything? Anyone yet? So, oh. if anyone has any question, you can, oh, can type in. Oh, perfect. I'm, I'm getting. It. Please message me directly on the chat, and I can. Uh, will a stuff? Will a full staff be hired to run the new masjid? given that significantly bigger size our or will it be volunteer based to the uh, brother zia brother father brother zaki okay so uh, uh, i'll start and then brother fawad and brother zaki can chime in so brother um, the we will uh, always always uh, try to do as much as we can as volunteers and we do that all the time and it's not uh, you, you must have seen that some of some of the volunteers have been doing it since 2001 we feel feel proud to serve the center and do as much as we can 
And uh, to that question, the, the operating cost of the new building will not significantly increase because it will be very uh, high efficient building in terms of heating and cooling and energy consumption. And we will not have that building open for everything. So that that's, uh, I mean, if uh, Brother Zaki and Brother Fawad can add on that, please. Brother Zaki, if you'd like to take, you have better expertise. I mean, I have I have some feedback, but Brother Zaki, if you'd like to take first. Marika Lafik, some of the uh, questions I think um, that, uh, you know, just um, learning from uh, Khalid Bai and Brother Zia on how to really reduce reduce cost, right? In terms of uh, the operations, the facility sides and so on and so forth. So when we were discussing, for example, systems, we're discussing, all of these actually are factors that will impact the decision-making process for which, which option do we go with, right? Uh, for example, right now, there are better building materials that we have that are actually very cost efficient. Um, is systems that we can put in place uh, right now, the systems that we have are so old. Even the sprinkler system that we have today in our current building, guys, uh, if you guys know, I think I share, I share a lot of what we do in facilities in our community. Just about uh, three or four months ago, $7,000 just to fix leaks. And that's a requirement. And if I don't get it fixed, the Sharon the fire department will not allow us to open, to have a prayer. And many times I have to go on the phone and say, I'm right here. I'm looking at the building. It's not burning, allow us to have a prayer. This happened like five, six times just the past few months. Uh, these are some of the things that I think um, we can share uh, with the community so they know, uh, you know, basically the older buildings cost you a lot of money to operate. Right now I'm waiting on a pump. Uh, we don't have that many pumps that we can actually use for the sprinkler, this same sprinkler system. And the cost is coming up to almost, almost coming up to right now to $6,000. So um, these are the things that we have to look at inshallah in terms of how uh, the new, you know, in terms of choices that we make. We looked at where can we actually position things so we can minimize uh, and maximize also uh, heating, for example, and so on. So these are some of the things, Brother Zia, hopefully. Uh... That was a very yeah, good so question. Just to add me. actually, right? Um, this is such a true uh, reflection that Brother Zaki gave, mashallah, right? So one of the things that if we notice in the current structure again is that, that it's just, mashallah, it's a beautiful hall, it's a big hall, but it's one hall, right? So energy efficiency is a challenge. Management of it is actually a challenge. Uh, the running costs are actually high because we, we either have to keep it cool or we have to keep it, you know, uh, warm at all times. So what and Brother Zia and Brother Zaki, as they were alluding to, you know, and they mentioned is that that new building is new building materials and uh, processes again and designs are much more energy efficient. So those are going to help us inshallah reduce our cost uh, significantly as well. But it you know, and uh, as Brother Zia was mentioning that uh, we do like to do volunteer work, but again, when, when there would be need be, you know, if there is a need and inshallah we can afford obviously, right? Uh, and we see, the, uh, we, we, we see that it is a must have, then definitely would look into uh, dedicated and permanent uh, facility management services. Great, actually, we can move on to the next question. Um, second. Next question was, uh, for the, each of the designs, there's a specific number of classrooms uh, and or spaces that we have um, pre-designed uh, pre or is that, still in the, is that still in the open? Classrooms, meeting spaces and so on, is there differences in availability? So uh, in each of the designs, um, the, minimum, the minimum meeting room, classroom requirement that we have put in uh, would be eight. But uh, for the, uh, the, that will be the minimum requirement. That's our requirement. And we might go for more than that, but uh, eight uh, multi-purpose meeting rooms is the minimum requirement that we are looking for that. The only challenge with the existing building with the expanding towards the leasing field, we might not get eight, we might get about four, but still that, that can work for now, inshallah. Uh, next question, Brother Zia, which option would require moving uh, these two school buildings? 
So the, uh, uh, the none of the options, uh, we will have to move the school building. The only with the option C, because the GE building, the modular building has already uh, completed its service life, but it doesn't mean that it is it, it has to be dismantled tomorrow. It's still a very useful building. Uh, we together with uh, 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 Al Noor Academy, brother Dr. Fatah, we, we maintain that building very well, and um, the town up till now has not come up with any challenges. But uh, that is the building. Eventually, will have to be taken out. All the other buildings are permanent, and with it will not be, have to be moved here. Uh, next question, but Buzia, how, how has the town uh, gauged on plant A, B, and C, and do they have our favorite? So uh, the town uh, is fine with all three plans, you know. But uh, for the plan B, they were a little bit skeptical that if we are putting a, such a huge structure in the middle of, in front of the school, how will the traffic management and the parking would be? That was the challenge uh, that came up from the town for the plan B. For plan A and C, there are no, no big challenges there. Is there any other questions? Um, we have about five minutes left. There's one question. Uh, ideally, when will the new facilities open? I'm sure it depends on many factors, but are we thinking three years from now, five, 10? Okay, so I'll, I'll, uh, if uh, I, I'll let any, um, all of my team speak with that, I'll start with that. It all depends. I mean, if uh, at least not for a year, because know that the COVID, COVID is here and it's going to taper off slowly. But if we go to the pre-COVID level soon, I mean, if you if, if you are in our center before the pre-COVID, I mean, we'll have to do this expansion very quickly, depending on how we generate the money. But the requirement is now, and the requirement was there by the end of 2019. Uh, and just let me add also one more point here that uh, um, pre, pre COVID, our Saturday school um, uh, enrollment was uh, above 200, and we were not able to accommodate the kids. And we had to, as Brother Fawaz already mentioned, we had to use other buildings, um, uh, the modular building to accommodate our kids. So if we hit that level soon, uh, within a year, then we'll have to seriously thinking about the expansion very soon. As of today, we have about four hundred seventy thousand dollars in the expansion um, uh, in the expansion fund. And thanks to all, I, I, I see, I see all my brothers uh, here uh, as the participant. I want to, I would like to mention a few names who have been uh, very uh, instrumental in the fundraising. Brother Fawad, um, um, uh, Rash, brother Rashid Noor, and brother Amar. They, all these uh, brothers have been very uh, supportive of the project and brother Ab uh, Abdul Al Shar, and we will need that support to move on, inshallah. But we, we, if it comes to that, we will have to do it soon. Uh, next question: uh, What is the neighbor's perspective uh, for the different construction plans? And the second follow-up question to this is: How long will each of the plans take? Brother Zia, maybe I can take the first question. So me, me or you? Uh, I can. Oh, sure, please. Can. Yeah. So I think one of the things that um, we're really being very prag pragmatic about is uh, building our relationship with the town. And this has been taken maybe the past three or four years or so. Um, so our relationship with the town has been great. And uh, you guys remember way, way back when uh, the folks on Chase Drive will be very upset about us, you know, about folks driving too fast or, or whatever that is. And Alhamdulillah, that's all has been subsided. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big effort, right? In keeping the connection with the town in multifaceted ways um, from educating our community to please respect the, 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 the traffic zone to communicating with the Sharon police where, you know, I could actually show you multiple pictures of the police actually coming around in our videos, checking our facility and supporting us. So they're, they're being there. We have been supporting the town actually. Um, we've been the biggest sponsor for them this year, the past year or so, where they, like Brother Zia mentioned, that the whole Sharon town, our facility was open for them to come over 
and donate blood. Uh, we've done this three times already, and uh, with the support of Brother uh, Amr Maslahi and, and, and Sister Sister Maryam. And then also at the same time, we opened up our uh, spaces for them to actually show videos for the families and so on during COVID time. I, you know, this is not a, it's not a one-time thing. You got to keep consistently working with the town. The town is recognizing uh, the value of our community and the value of, of our center. And I think that's making a big impact, inshallah, in any decisions we make forward. Brother Zia, maybe you can take a second. I can add just to what Brother Zaki said, actually, is that, he, he, that was the key portion, right? It's all about relationship building. I mean, we are here, right? And mm -hmm. I'll tell you that uh, the, the, a leader from the part of the world where I come from, right? I mean, he mentioned something that is struck to me and I heard it as a kid, but he's mentioned something that you can always change your enemies, but you can never change your neighbors. You cannot replace them, right? That meant so much. And, you know, that was coming literally from the arch enemy of Pakistan, that is India, but that leader mentioned that and it struck to me too hard. That's the, that was a key there, that we are part of the society and relationship building is extremely crucial for us. Yes, our neighbors were unhappy when they, they, the street was gridlocked and it happened quite a few times. You know, there was full congestion, there were speeding issues. But in general, when they actually started to mingle more and when they saw that, you know what, there, there is a chance that we could be improving this so much that inshallah in future there may not be any congestion or any roadblock or something like that they actually liked it they loved coming to see the uh, animated movie actually and we all connected so much and mashallah brothers are keep played a tremendous uh, role in that so all of this is you know i mean it has improved over the past several years that, that you know and inshallah it will continue so we are hoping again and we do anticipate based on the relationships improvements and all that that we would not face uh, any any issue. Or, and, and in fact, they would actually like it, that more facilities would open f even for them to come and perhaps enjoy because we do see our neighbors coming sometimes just to visit the, uh, the, the kids play area that we have or even the basketball area. So they enjoy that. And in fact, I'm pretty sure they're gonna welcome it more. Yeah. There was yeah, a second question, brother, I think so. That concludes that, inshallah. And is there any other questions? Yeah, last, uh, there, there was a two-part question. I'm not sure if they were both answered. Uh, the uh, two-part question was, how did the neighbor's perspective? And the second one was, uh, how long will the construction take for each option? And there's just two more questions after that. The, the, the construction, um, uh, uh, it, it all depends how much quickly we can collect the money. Yeah, construction itself, as far as I know, I'm not a builder or an architect, but the, the, our architect, when we talked to them, they, they, they said uh, this kind of a project can be done within a year, yeah. But they did mention, Brother Zia, one thing is that, that it also depends what option you would be choosing. Exactly. Because yeah. every option had its own merit. Basically, option A and B would be uh, would have impact on our services as well. We may not be able to open uh, for some time at least our services because they are. I mean, essentially, we are. You know, will be there will be construction work happening in the same part, so there will be a safety issue and all that, and there will be different codes applied. So there were some. While we have not gone to that level of detail. Right, but there were some high level of feedback basically that a lot depends while everything can be done in 12 months, but it a lot depends what option you're choosing. Brothers, yeah, if you recall that actually. Very, brother, brother Fawaz, very well said and reminded. Yeah, because uh, option A and B will require uh, this dismantling of part of the existing building and closing off our services for three to six months. That is uh, very accurate. And thanks for reminding that, brother. Uh, last three questions, inshallah. Um, how much, uh, uh, can, but as I know you mentioned this, but how much, uh, or was our financial standing right now for the expansion? We have about uh, $470,000 in the bank. This is uh, the money that we have after we have spent, uh, we, after we have paid the Outback Engineering and the architects. So we have about $470,000 in the bank, but we have firm commitments of about, uh, about, uh, $500,000 from the community members who said when our groundbreaking, they can come up with that kind of money. And also there's a donor, if he, uh, he also uh, came forward that if we, if we uh, 
come up with a certain kind of, kind of a structure on a new building, we can get another million dollar donated towards that. Okay, wonderful. Next question was, um, Mela reward that donor. Uh, the next question was, uh, what will be the capacity of the new prayer hall options and will we still be able to have Eid prayer inside that fits everyone? Very, very good question again. All the questions question. are really good. So Brother Fawad, can you, uh, you, you want to take that? I actually do not recall the exact yes, but again, uh, the numbers, but I can actually try to do justice as much as possible. The, the deal is that, I mean, the vision and focus is again, is to have one Friday prayer, not many Friday prayers, and actually a very big eat prayer as well. Not several of them or four or five of them. Maybe, you know, just to accommodate different times, maybe two, but not too many. Like we, once we had to do four Friday prayers, right? So the idea overall is that the new structures, I think, as Brother Zia mentioned, even just expanding the current hall actually is going to give us uh, around uh, five, six thousand more. So it's going to double our capacity, right? And then uh, that's the option one. The, the other one, the, the option B was, I mean, which is mashallah expanding in the front is going to accommodate a lot more. And the same envision was actually uh, brought into the option C as well, that we will have tremendous, uh, brothers, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, is it 18,000 square feet we were talking about? What, what was yes. Quoted? The I mean, with the option C, uh, we will at one time, um, uh, the, the, we, the, for the prayer area only, for the praying only, uh, we will be able to accommodate uh, upwards of uh, 1,200 to 1,500 people in one prayer area. MashaAllah, right? And that is covered inside, safe, secure, regardless of what kind of weather we have outside, which is actually extremely important, right? We don't like you guys praying in cold or in, you know, rainy weather. <laughs> it's not really... And especially with Eid and Ramadan shifting so quickly towards March now, which it's, it's going to start, inshallah, April 12th, by the way, in, in just three months. So, I mean, that, those are cold months for us and rainy months as well. Uh, last question. Can you just restate the costs um, for the three different projects? Yes, uh, now <laughs> I've worked on that so much. I, I, I don't have to even go back to the slide. I remember it now. So uh, for the option A, uh, expansion toward the uh, leaching field, toward the slope, is around $3 million. The expansion toward the basketball court, which is a, a huge structure, is going to be $11 million. The brand new building on the flat ground is going to be about $5.2 million. Wonderful, thank you. And just a comment from one of the parents saying that uh, they really appreciate the committee putting forward the needs of the youth first and making this a, a community center for them in a, a sports environment and everything. Yeah, for that parent, I want, to, I want to add something. All our kids, all my kids, all three of them grew up in this community and I'm pretty sure most of your kids have grown up there. So that, that's our prime thing because we, uh, I, I'm not going to be any better Muslim now, but this is all we're doing for our kids who are coming up inshallah. I, I want to add, as the brother Zia said, I moved in this community when I was seven years old, and the basketball court was our biggest attractant coming to the masjid. Uh, we had a we used to play in the driveway before uh, it was developed to an actual basketball court, but then we used to spend full summers playing on this current basketball court. So I just want to state, restate what brother Zia said. Uh, it really it makes such a difference for children to have an actual facility where they can come and spend their free time. So I think we've answered all the questions. Uh, we request uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman. To please yes, close take, off with the door. I'll just take oh, a minute before ahead. before the imam, please, if you could, if I could, please. Please go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah. So um, let's not forget. I mean, right now, I want to thank everyone, especially all the uh, community members who joined uh, on this very important meeting and uh, listened to us, and all the team who have been working tirelessly to come up with this. Uh, 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 trust me, uh, Brother uh, Rashid and Brother Fatah knows that uh, this all started more than five, six years ago, and we have been meeting for hundreds of hours to this. And at the same time, I do not want to forget Brother uh, Imran, who's running, he's always supporting all kind of uh, online meeting that we do. He is sitting here uh, uh, running this whole meeting now. And I don't want to forget all the families of the board members. You know, they, 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 without our spouses and kids' help, we won't be able to put so much time, time for the community and they are never mentioned. So I want to thank all the families and spouses of the board members who, who let that happen. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. Uh, brother, brother Fawad and Brother Zaki, any final words before we end with the dua? 
I just need 10 seconds perhaps only, right? So uh, my dear community, Jazakallah khair really for joining this. The, you know, this was a very important uh, for us to share, you know, what we have achieved and what we have come to as part of our uh, promise that, uh, you know, Brother Zia did a couple of weeks back during the fundraiser. But the key I want to raise and request is that, that you know, I mean, uh, th this, the, the, this, what we are presenting, it has to spread among other community members as well. So, you know, all of you, mashallah, are our ambassadors. You know, they, on, on, like, what I'm requesting is that, that please continue to provide your feedback to the core community, uh, core community members, to the board members, to the, 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 the facilities team and every, the building and planning committee. And also relay what you learn and what you hear to others as well, that there is a plan so other people can come and ask questions and provide their feedback as well. It's only going to get better when so many, you know, we get good ideas, good suggestions, and perhaps good networking as well. Maybe we'll find someone who can, you know, not only donate for us, but perhaps take the building project and do it in a, in a, in a very different cause for us, right? So it's only going to increase if we go and do uh, our outreach. So Jazakallah khair. Brother Zaki. Um, I just really wanted to just uh, really emphasize the the fact that we're um, this is a lot of work and that we're really um, you know appreciate the guidance and we're on the footsteps of the 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 brothers who are ahead of us. Yeah, and may Allah help us out uh, make this make I mean, these tough tough decisions. I'm talking about the brother Muhi, brother. Dr. Rashid, uh, Brother Mazin, Dr. Sha'ar, I mean, uh, I can go on and on, uh, Dr. Badawi, uh, all of those guys, they're ahead of us, they have a lot of, uh, you know, support us, please, I just want to say, I really would like to seek your, your guidance, your support, uh, your help, it's tremendous pressure, sometimes you just feel like you're breaking down, uh, but uh, I think most of it, most of the strength we have, the strength we have, uh, comes from, from you guys and from the support and uh, just kind of holding our back to help us continue to move forward. Uh, Jazakum Allah khair for everything. That's a so true, Brother Zaki. Thank you so much, really. I totally echo that. Absolutely. Jazakum Allah khair. Inshallah, Sheikh, if you, if you hear this, could you unmute, Inshallah, and close us off with the dua? Subhanallah, bihamdi, adada khulqihi, wa ribu nuslihi, wa zinata arshi, wa midada kalimati, subhanaka, 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 la nusita ana alayk, anta kama athnita ala nafsik, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad, وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واستر عيوبنا اللهم أتمن الصالحات أعمالنا وبالسعادة آجالنا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا نسألك زيادة في العمر وصحة في الجسد وسعة في الرزق اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم تقبل دعاءنا وأعمالنا وسائر عباداتنا We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our community and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this project that they're working on give them the ability to do what is best for us, for our community, for our families and for the needs of our deen and dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and to guide them to do what is best and to do what is right and to fulfill that. And oh Allah, reward them for that. And oh Allah, uh, give them strength of what they need for, for this project. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them immensely and make this a sadaqa jariya, not just for them, for their parents and for their grandparents and for their children and for their progeny to come. And oh Allah, make this a beacon for Massachusetts and the great uh, uh, New England and for the great America. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a place that people come to and benefit from and that it remains on, on the place of this, uh, on this planet like stars in the sky. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us ikhlas in our work, give us sincerity in our work, and oh Allah, accept our good deeds and accept this project. And oh Allah, make it easy for us, make it easy for the community. And oh Allah, make it a success. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of those who are going to donate and those who have already donated and those who are intending to donate, whether it's wealth, whether it's their time, whether it's their energy, whether it's their expertise. Oh Allah, accept all of their donations, all of their efforts, all of their time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them immensely. And make it a sadaqa jariya for them. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.
بارك الله فيكم. Uh, just a quick reminder, next Friday, the Interfaith Committee has a program with uh, Sheikh Khalil Abdul Rashid. Um, so please do attend. Uh,